Well, hi everyone. One well, welcome back to the channel. It's a Sunday, so it's not a normal video. Our normal videos come out on a Thursday. Sunday videos are always something a little bit different. And two things happening today. One, I'm going to announce the winner of the free prize draw to win some Caravantastic merch. That lovely, yes, very collectible Caravantastic bag. We're giving that away and I'm going to announce the winner at the end of this video. Only a short video, you'd be pleased to know, but I'm doing a product review and it's a product review on a sat nav, okay? Now, we get asked quite a bit, Dave, what sat nav do you use in your car? Well, let me just reach into my glove box. This is what I use. It's the Aguari um, sat nav. Can't remember the model, to be honest with you. I've had it about seven years now, and it's a little bit more than a sat nav, to be fair, because it's also got uh, a built-in dash cam. You can see the camera on there as well. Uh, you can also use it like to collect your emails and get online and stuff like that. But primarily its function is it's a sat nav. It's, um, it's a caravan motorhome sat nav. So you can plug into this all your dimensions uh, and it will make sure that you don't go down any roads that are too narrow or run any bridges that are too low and stuff like that. But I paid somewhere in the region of about 280 quid for this. And that was, I say, I think it was about six or seven years ago, actually. So quite a lot of money. Uh, but yeah, it's, it does the job. It's a good sat nav. So when I get asked, I recommend this because that's what I've got. But I've just been sent this sat nav. Now, I'll put some prices up shortly, but let me tell you, this is significantly less money than the one that I've just shown you. Um, it's designed really, I think, for large vehicles, for lorries and the like. Uh, but in the same way that you can with the Aguari, you can plug in the dimensions of your outfit. So the length, the width and the height. Uh, and that will make sure, and I know this works because I've tried it, that you don't go down uh, roads or under narrow bridges that your vehicle or caravan motorhome camper won't go down. So let's have a quick look at it. It's going to be quick. It's so um, intuitive. It's unbelievable. In the box, they do come. It does come with a set of instructions. I've never looked at them once. And to be honest with you, because it's intuitive, you don't need to. Well, I didn't. Well, as you can see, it comes uh, nicely boxed. Um, it's got a lovely bracket in there, which fits perfectly onto the windscreen, which is what I've got attached now. Uh, and this is what it looks like on the dash. Comes with, uh, comes, it came with two. I don't know if it's supposed to come with two, but it came with two uh, adapters for a 12 volt car, sort of cigarette lighter type plug. Now, I think the reason it came with two is because one of them, and I haven't double checked this, but I think one of them is if you, for a 24 volt uh, input, maybe into a lorry or a truck or something like that. Uh, but I've got it all plugged in, and when I've got it in, this is kind of the initial screen that comes up. Now, um, self-explanatory, so this is why I've not had to use any, in, any instructions so far. Starting uh, top right, date and time. Well, the immediately I plug this in, the date and time was already set for me, but I'll just click on it. Uh, there's today's date, there's the time, and we've got it set onto a 24 hour clock type display. You can adjust all this stuff down here if you're in a different country. Okay, you just, um... there we go, we're in Casablanca now. <laughs> so you just adjust the time uh, to what you need. So ours is GMT, obviously. If you want a 12 hour view rather than a 24 hour view, then you would just click up here. Oh. There we go, and we're now on to a 12-hour view, but I like the 24-hour view, so that's fine. So that's dead easy, nothing to do, it was already set like that. Uh, if you want to, you can tune this to your radio. So if you want to use FM, then you would click on the Use FM button here, and you can change that, and then all you do is you tune your car radio in to that frequency, and then all of the um, voice settings that you hear coming out of the sat-nav will come out of your car audio system. Don't need to though, because it works really well as it is. So I'm not gonna bother with that. Um, you've got a volume button. Obviously that is pretty self-explanatory. You can just um, move the volume up and down as you want to. It says something about background music you can put on here, but I've not got that on. Um, and then this is the configuration screen for, your, for the actual navigation software, which uh, this just finds, I think, the uh, navigation path well that's already preset so nothing to do on that and then in terms of the gps info again just tells you exactly where you are what your coordinates are and stuff like that something that most people on a sat nav would never even look at so again no need to adjust so that gives you really just this setting screen now 
There are some things that you can configure on this. Um, I didn't really have to change anything on it, um, but they are self-explanatory. So if you're in a different country, you want to change the language, you just obviously change the language accordingly. Portuguese, for example, but no, leave that as it is. There's a backlight on there, which I haven't touched. I just wanted to keep that exactly as it was. If you want to reset your uh, settings, that's easy enough. You just click on that. Uh, are you sure you want to default settings? Well, no, I don't, because I've put some stuff in already. And then you've got some system info over here, which just as again is a bit about the software. You can update the software online so that you've always got maps for life on this system, which is absolutely superb. So that's what that's all about. And then if you go into the actual navigation screen itself, just click on the top left there. That'll just uh, take a, a while just to, can you see the line moving across the bottom there? So that's just gonna set itself up. And then you can name the unit. I've got it set up as car at the moment. You can see you can have lorry in here. You can put in things like the maximum speed. So I've put in obviously maximum speed at 70 miles an hour. Uh, depends where you are in the world, I suppose, um, etc. You can scroll down here and, so this is where you put the length and width and height of your vehicles in. So you would just for the length exam, for example, click on that and then you'd input the length. Now the strange thing is, and I've not yet found how to change that. It's all sort of imperial in yards. Um, so it might be, and I'll have a look in a second that you can change that to, to meters, uh, but not a massive job really to work it out. Cause once you've input it anyway, you're probably never going to change it again. So um, I'm going to work out what my uh, outfit length and height and stuff is which i've not done yet and i'll put that in so i'll do that now so what i've done here i've just gone online and double checked the length of the uh, caravan and the car combined and uh, done the same with the width and the height and then i'm going to input these numbers now now what i have done i've just sort of uh, to be on the safe side i've just sort of made it slightly bigger okay the dimensions i'm going to put in here are slightly bigger than reality just so that i've i don't want to undercook it you see so i'm going to put in 13 13.50 yards for the length of uh, the unit complete with car and caravan. In terms of width, I've rounded that up to five yards. It's actually um, a little less than that. So I'm just going to put 5.0 in there. Hit done. So we've got five yards in. And then the height, well, obviously the caravan's the highest bit, so I don't need to add the height of the car and the caravan, just the caravan itself, which I've rounded up to three meters. It was 2.83, I think, but I'm just gonna round it up to 3.0. Click those in. So there you go. We've got the length of 13 and a half yards, the width of five yards, and a height of three yards. I'm not quite sure why it's imperial. There may well be a way of converting that to metric anyway, but to be honest with you, uh, once you've done it, you've done it. So we've got three axles in total. So that's what I've got on there. Maximum allowed weight. I haven't checked that yet, so I'll have to sort of come back and just put that in, but um, that would make a difference. If you're gonna, gonna go over a bridge, for example, that had a maximum weight of three tons, and you've got four tons in here, it will tell you not to go over the bridge, obviously. So that's it in terms of setup. We are ready to go. Let me show you the map. So this is what the screen looks like, and I tell you, it is very intuitive. It's almost what I would call plug and play. Um, people sometimes moan about sat-navs. Oh, the sat-nav took me down the wrong road, you know, or whatever. Um, so, you know, sometimes you can set for shortest route. Sometimes you can set for fastest route. Uh, I've never really had many problems with sat-navs. I've traveled all around the UK in previous jobs that I've done. And uh, only on occasions where I've ended up down a road I wouldn't want to go down is because the sat-nav was not set up or configured correctly for the journey that I wanted to do. So always bear that in mind. Anyway. The screen's lovely. Um, let me just talk you through some of the things you can see. So let's click on menu. Again, don't have to do this. These are just you know purely options that you want or might want. Click on more. You've got a unit converter on here. So, ah, that's where you can change the length. Look. So um, we've got it in yards and feet and what have you here, uh, but you can change that by going down to meters, centimeters. There you go. I knew it'd be there somewhere. So. I'm not going to change it just now because I've just set it all up. It is so self-explanatory. I've not looked at the instructions once and I've already worked out how to do so much stuff on it. Uh, show map, uh, click into menu, bottom left, touch screen, uh, and then go on to route options and then create a route. 
and, and then you've got your current GPS position, so that's where you're starting from. So you um, you hit the plus button here, and then you need to click into the find address icon. And then there's a default comes up for some reason in the town of Nottingham. So let's go into um, uh, Great Yarmouth. Great space. Yarmouth, United Kingdom. So that's found that. What's the street name I want to go to? Well, I want to go to, let's say I want to go to uh, Regent Road. So you start to type in and then suddenly it comes up with a different option. So there's Regent Road. Um, you can put a house number in here if you have one. I don't have one particularly, but we'll just put in 24. Well, 20, there isn't a 24, so we'll put in a 23 and then hit done. And now that's telling me exactly where Regent Road is in Great Yarmouth and there's where I'm asking it to go to. If I'm happy with that, I can hit select. Just confirms the configuration of your vehicle, which is good if you are a lorry driver in, your, in and out of different vehicles. Uh, but if you've just got it constantly set the same, then you know, just click OK. So the route starts and ends in an area that's accessible to pedestrians only. OK, I understand that. So that's fine. So we're happy to go. Tells you how far it is, 2.6 miles. Um, we're in, we're set up for car. Let's go. So here we are. I've, uh, I'm currently on South Deans Road. My next manoeuvre will be a right turn in 1.9 miles onto Nottingham Way. Um, so let's let's go. Enter the roundabout. Take the third exit. What's really good about the screen here is it's given me plenty of advance notice of when I need to make my next manoeuvre, 2.8 miles, bottom right. Uh, bottom left is also telling me what the current speed limit is on this road, and if I was to exceed that speed limit, it would send off uh, an alert to let me know that I've exceeded the speed limit. And top left, it tells me what type of manoeuvre my next manoeuvre will be. So. In 1.9 miles, I need to turn right at the roundabout, take the third exit. There's a number three in the box. So the sat nav has just alerted me that I need to turn right in half a mile. It's now 600 yards. Speed limit's down to 30. It's turned red here, because I'm actually just doing slightly over 30 miles an hour. There you go, it's just turned to the normal sign in the bottom left. The uh, name of the road at the top there, Beach Road, that's the road that I want to turn into. And Kings Way is the road that I'm on, that's at the bottom there. So uh, really good, clear um, you know, notifications on screen, really. So let's see. Turn right at the roundabout, taking the third exit. So good advance warning as I'm coming up towards the roundabout. It's a mini roundabout, here it is. Now it's telling me I'm on Beach Road and I'm heading for St. Thomas's Road, uh, which is at the end of this road. And that's where the Lake and Arms pub is, which is where I'm heading to. So there you go, folks. It's really simple to use. And although I've not towed the caravan with it on yet, I've got it all set up and plugged in as if I was towing the caravan. And I've used it in my local area, an area that I know very well. I know where I would and where I wouldn't take the caravan. And I've set it up to take me down some routes um, that if I had the caravan on, I would know to avoid. And the sat-nav did indeed make me avoid the routes that I should do. So impressions are really good. Now, in terms of price, I'm going to flash a price up on the screen for you now. Uh, there's a special discount code also for you to use. I'll put that in the description below. And then you can order away to your heart's content. I mentioned I paid about £280 for our previous sat-nav. Well worth a look, I think. So let's go over and have a little look now and see who's won the amazing caravantastic bag so we've had 144 names go into the lucky draw let's push the button now and find out who the winner is congratulations at Haley miller 8892 you are the winner of the caravantastic bag 
Like I always say, if you have been, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment and hit the notification bell. We answer all the comments that we get and we appreciate all the support from all of you subscribers, old and new. Thanks very much indeed. See you Thursday at half past four and congratulations to the winner of our Caravantastic merchandise. See you soon, guys. Bye for now.